Swan was as out as you could be in the 19th century. He was so out that the President of the United States knew about him. It was well known within Washington, D.C., which is where he lived, that he was the leader of a queer community. I'm a cultural historian and journalist focusing on the history of queer black people in America. That impulse led me to just dig through all the archives and records I could find, and that led me to a Washington Post article from 1888 describing a police raid on a, on a drag ball. And I had never heard of a drag ball happening that long ago. I didn't know that drag had, that the word drag even existed that far back. William Dorsey Swan was born in Hancock, Maryland to enslaved parents. In the 19th and early 20th century was not so much about public performance. It was about leading a group of people together. The balls that Swan held were really private affairs that the only way anybody would know about them is because the police raided them. Swan is the world's first drag queen. The reason I say that is because he's the first documented person to use the term queen to describe himself in the context of a ball or party that was described by its participants as a drag. Drag is organized in modern day around houses led by mothers based around dance and beauty contests. Well, those are elements that existed in Swan's day in the drag culture of the 19th century. We use the term drag queen now, or queen, to describe um, a male person wearing a dress. Oftentimes that's how it's used in contemporary language. In Swan's day, the term queen signified a leader, somebody who held an honored place within the community. Drag comes with, with power, it also comes with a platform, it also comes with responsibility, and it's all in the way that you utilize those three things. Drag queens can command attention, you know, just by being in the room, without saying a word, just by their presence alone. My name is Harmonica Sunbeam, and I am a drag performer, hostess, and comedian, and I've been doing this for ah, 31 years. <laughs> I would describe my drag style as uh, somewhere between over the top <laughs> and casual, wherever that is. But I love wearing jewelry, I love wearing lots of hair, and just, you know, being the life of the party even when there's no party. <laughs> Throughout the 19th century and into the 20th century, anytime there was a special event, there would often be a cakewalk. Cakewalk was a walking dance very similar to a soul train dance, very similar to voguing, very similar to a second line, in which participants would strut and they would improvise the, the way they moved their bodies. Whoever won this cakewalk got a cake as a prize, which is why it was called the cakewalk. During Swan's lifetime, uh, he was sent to jail numerous times for holding drag balls after police raids. He faced beatings, he faced Job, losing a job, he faced loss of friends, all because of, of his effort to really build a community around queerness and drag in the 19th century. The prosecutor charged Swan with a crime called keeping a disorderly house. That was a euphemism for running a house of prostitution. That's not what Swan was doing, obviously. Swan pleaded not guilty. He was convicted anyway. I think William Dorsey Swan's life uh, really resonated with me. Despite the fact that this man was a former slave and had been through a lot, it makes me feel very proud to, to know that th this man, you know, so, so early on, was fighting for rights or fighting for our freedom of expression. I would like to think that Swan would feel honored 
by there being so many high profile queens in the world who make a living, who are on television, it would, it would be my hope that over time people could understand what his contribution was to creating that world and that we could all honor him by acknowledging sort of the roots of, of drag in America.